Oh, there's been a crusade, but for Antioch to start this episode off, a Timurid settlement, and these Timurids are expanding like crazy. Nothing seems to be able to stop them. Uh, meanwhile, Poland really extending their reach all the way to Antwerp now, taking mostly Milanese territory, but yeah, they've made it all the way to Antwerp, which is quite a distance, you know, going from the the Black Sea here with Ayazi all the way around to uh, the English Channel, name enough, with Antwerp. That's quite a big border. Are they connected to the Mediterranean? No, but near enough. Uh, yeah, the Papal States were pushed back uh, from the Siege of Venice, but the Hungarians have swooped in now, and they've got a lot more troops. Ooh, they lost. Venice defended. But they came in with the reinforcements. The Hungarians looking weak. I think Venice can, can continue to hold out here. Oh, the comeback of the Moors. Taking Marrakesh. Now, that's a lot of troops that they've got to deal with. But taking back Marrakesh, at least that's a good start. And, yeah, Byzantium taking back Inconium from Antioch. Who is looking really weak right now? Antioch? They could be the next faction to go. The well, oh, sorry, the Irish took back Wales, uh, weakening England. I don't know who's going to dominate the British Isles. Like, one of these three factions is going to do it. Wales has already been wiped out in episode one, but one of these three has got to do it. Um, we lost uh, Caesarea and uh, Jeddah to the Timurids, Antioch. One final settlement left, Baghdad, garrisoned by just one unit. They could get regicided. That is a possibility. Oh, the Irish and the Scots now at war. That could be an, that could be a big one, because Ireland's main problem, you know, when it, when it comes to them defending like Northern England and Wales, they couldn't get troops through. Because uh, we didn't want to annoy the Scots, but now that we can actually enter this land, capture it, and then attack from the north, maybe that could actually cause the downfall of England. Or maybe they're just not going to move at all. That's also a possibility. Yep, yep, that seems to be the case. <laughs> and they've lost Wales again. Ooh, the Scots took Bruges uh, from the Irish. Interesting move by Scotland. I like how I like how colonial these powers are. Like most of their wars are actually taking place in other territories in Europe. <laughs> Scottish Denmark as well from last episode. I'm loving it. I, I love what we're seeing from the British Isles. Oh, rest in peace, Antioch. They were one of the largest powers for most of this game. They did very well, but they just could not hold out against the Timurids. Rip Antioch. Are we going to see it this turn? Chances are yes. Yeah, there we go. Rip Antioch. And the Timurids looking very powerful now. Although this Polish crusade is here. Could that be enough to, enough to slow them down and let neighbouring powers take them out? It's possible. Really? Has no one taken Corsica yet? Surely some faction must have taken it and, it, and it rebelled. But it's a castle. Why would it rebel? I don't know what's happened here. Surely one faction must have taken it. But seeing it as a rebel castle, castles don't rebel that often. Unless the faction got regicided, but... Can't see any. No, I don't, I don't think any faction has been regicided. All the, you know, all the factions within range to actually take this are still alive. I don't know what's happened there. Well, this is a bit messy. But Venice still holding out. Nothing, nothing seems able to bring it down. Antioch is now under siege by the Crusaders. They had one battle, the Polish got very weak. But they should be able to take it unless Timurid reinforcements can get in here. But I think they play their turn second. Poland might just be able to step into here, but no, they've given up. The Crusade is over for them, they've just given up. I think what happened was 
the general leading the army died. I believe that's what that is. Maybe they just gave up altogether, I don't know. And the Scots have joined the crusade. <laughs> Good luck, Scotland. Where have all of Ireland's armies gone? Oh, they really lost all of those troops. Did they rebel? I don't know. Oh, finally, something happened to the Teutonic Order. They lost Riga to the Norwegians. Uh, they haven't taken a single settlement yet. Hold on, are they the only faction? I think they are. I believe they are the only faction that has not yet taken a single settlement. Yeah, I'm confident with that. And yeah, they've just lost one, they're down to the final one. Fawn. That's it, that's all they've got left. Oh, Milan. Holding Vilnius under siege up here by the Poles. That's done a go. Yep, there it goes. Now that's Polish territory. How, how is Milan holding out? Not that well. <laughs> uh, they've still got Dijon. Dijon is safe, but... Yeah, Frankfurt's done a go. Okay, Dijon has fallen, but Frankfurt still holds. Uh, the final settlement of Milan. Is this it? Another one straight power about to be wiped out completely. Nope, they held out. Impressive. What is it with the British in this series? England has taken Antwerp from the Poles. I don't know what's going on with the British Isles, but I'm loving their game. Um, Ireland did lose Pamplona, though, to the Portuguese. And Milan has become a vassal of France, meaning they have had to sign a truce with Poland. Interesting. So Milan, chances are they're going to survive for quite some time. I believe, yeah. I, I was going to say France benefited more out of this. And yes, I do stand by that. I think they did. They gained about these four settlements here, plus Dijon. But still, Poland got some big gains there from Milan. I am also going to say that this, so far, is the best France we have ever seen. We've never seen France do this well. Is that boat on land? Oh, I'm getting Rome 2 flashbacks. <laughs> Doritos got taken back by... Uh, Byzantium. And Ireland has become a vassal of Scotland. Yeah, Ireland is looking very weak right now. If I was the Scots though, I would probably just take it. What is it with vassals all of a sudden? The Teutonic Order, finally doing something, has become a vassal of Poland. And yet, at the same time, they are a vassal of Novgorod. Eh? Let's take a look. Yeah, they're allied with Poland, so Novgorod owns the Teutonic Order. Where's Poland in this? Yep, they own the Teutonic Order as well. That is interesting, never seen that before. <laughs> France is getting a little bit sick of the British, and they've seemed to team up with the Poles to kick out the Scots and the English. Poland failed, and France failed. The British will still be present in mainland Europe. Oh, rip on grip. They did have Antioch under siege, but got destroyed. These Timurids are tough. But at least the Timurids are getting very weak, losing a lot of troops uh, to beat back uh, these Crusader armies. So even if a Crusade is not successful, they are successful because they weaken the Timurids. Bruges has fallen to the French, but the Norwegians do seem very interested. Oh, no, oh, oh, whoa, 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 that was uh, quite big. It turns out they're not interested. They've pulled back and they've taken Nottingham. Norway, the Norwegian Vikings up here, swooped on through to Nottingham and have taken it. Wow, that that is a Viking raid. Right there, very rarely do we see in AI onlys a non-Britain power get a foothold in Britain. This is rare in vanilla, and Scotland trying to take out York. England could be very weak very soon. The Norwegians have Bruges under siege. Uh, Poland trying again for Antwerp, Scotland still fighting at York. 
oh, this is a very interesting part of the world all of a sudden. Uh, Byzantium did take Ragusa, Venice, looking at their weakest point right now. Okay, the English held back from the Scots and the Poles. The French defended themselves from um, the Norwegians, but they're now moving on to Antwerp, the English. And I cannot believe I missed something as big as this. Constantinople has fallen to the Hungarians. Now, Byzantium should easily be able to take it back, but still, that's a big move, and that's going to really slow down Byzantium. Byzantium, remember, is one of the main powers right now, holding back the Timurids. So if they are weak, then the Timurids are going to flood on through. Antwerp has fallen to France, and France is looking beautiful on the map. Like, just look at that. A beautiful France right there. They hold their full modern borders. This is definitely the best we have ever seen France in any of these. They're still on Milan as well, or Frankfurt as a vassal. Oh, they've even taken Pamplona as well. Didn't even notice that. London is under siege by the Norwegians. Can they do it? Fail crusade. Oh, rip. That's not going to be good. That gives a lot of power to the Timurids. They did well to survive. Well, survive in Antioch, like, that crusade was not going to destroy them altogether. You know what I mean. <laughs> I love how Milan is down to a final settlement in Frankfurt, and yet we come all the way over here, and there's just some random fort occupied by Milan. <laughs> what well, looks like to them in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> London has fallen, and it's burning. Well done to the Vikings. The English trying to reclaim it there. Can they do that? Nope, they failed. Oh, but uh, Poland took uh, Denmark, uh, which I did not notice. That must have been very recent. Yeah, very recent, just last turn. That's a big problem for Norway, losing Denmark. That was a very valuable settlement. And we're going for Riga as well. Oh, and Venice has fallen as well. Uh, to the Papal States, York just fell that turn to the Scots. Yeah, Venice fell. Ooh, that's big. Uh, Nuremberg now under siege. I'm sorry that I'm missing a lot of this stuff, but, you know, it, it does get chaotic at times. I'm covering it the best that I can. Uh, but sometimes, some stuff does slip through. Okay, so, war between Poland and France. The two main European powers right now. I wouldn't be surprised, whoever wins this war, wins the game. That would not surprise me. Uh, Venice still alive in Kiev, and England still alive in Wales, but their final settlement. Norway took back Denmark, but is it a little bit too late? They lost it again. England, their final defence, are they going to fall? And to the Norwegians of all powers, yes they did. England is dead. And literally there's no real change in the British Isles. Like before it, it was uh, three powers, which one's done a dominate? And now we're here. Quite a lot has happened, yet still three powers. Which one is going to dominate? It's still very undecided. <laughs> like nothing really changed, not really. Well done, Mars. What a brilliant place to have a boat. Well played. <laughs> All the way down in Timbuktu. Ragusa fell to the Papal States, and people cheering on Byzantium might find this a little bit troubling. But it's been like 20 turns now, and they've still not taken back Constantinople. What is going on? We have yet another crusade. I bet it's for Antioch. Jerusalem. Eh, still timid. Wonder who's gonna join and fail this time. Oh, Venice is gone, and because they are rebel, I guess it was a regicide. Yeah. Regicide is what happens when you lose all your family members. Your faction goes rebel. And I believe that is what happened to the Venetians. Mosul fell to the Timurids? And something else big happened. Ah, here we are. Thessalonica fell to the Hungarians. I don't know what happened to Byzantium. They were looking good. What's going on here? Uh, but, 
Yeah, they seem to be losing to Hungary. They took Ragusa back. This is Sicilian for some reason. And let's just get the names back. Wow, that's chaotic. <laughs> now that's how you do a blockade. And Byzantium has become a vassal of the Hungarians. With, whoa, with one, two, three, four, five, six settlements. Six settlements. They became a vassal of a faction with three, four, five, six, seven settlements. That you rarely see. This war between Poland and France has been going on for a while. But I believe this is the first big move. France has taken Vienna. The Turks have become a vassal of the Timurids. Yeah, I can understand that. And the French win! They actually got the victory objectives, really? Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot, hold on. Um, I put it in short victory campaign. Uh, in Rome Total War, short victory campaign is usually an epic race. I was hoping for the same in Medieval 2, but usually it's not that epic because it's a little bit slower. Uh, so yeah, well done France for getting the short victory objective. I uh, should have mentioned that at the start, uh, but oh well. So we do have an actual winner. It is the French. And well done to them. We've never actually seen them do that well before. Uh, Cordoba has fallen to the Portuguese and they're now pushing for Lyon. And Norway pushing for Hamburg. And they're probably going to take it as well. But yeah, we do have a winner. Well done to the French. And whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Poland has become a vassal of the French, and I was making a big deal out of this, Byzantium. But Poland, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 settlements. The second or third biggest power in the game has become a vassal of another power. Which means that France, right now, at this present moment, Hold on, where is Poland? Ah, they're here. I was going to say, if they had Teutonic Order as well as a vassal, that's even more for France. France owns all of modern France, northern Iberia, uh, Netherlands, Belgium, uh, southern modern Germany, Vienna, and the rest of Germany through a vassal. Poland, mo a lot of Eastern Europe uh, before we get to Russia. That's a lot of land. They've got Frankfurt as well as a vassal. France owns half of Europe. That is quite a lot. And I think that is a good place to end this episode. France wins and they do own half of Europe. Yet, there's going to be one more. One more episode where I will go another 100, 130 turns more uh, to turn 450. And we'll see who the true winner is at that point. Can France hold on to their power? Or will someone else dethrone them? One more episode, that's it. And then we'll probably move on to something else. Another series. I do love these, but they do get a bit repetitive at times. I think one more should be a good end. But I do want to check out the stats very quickly, so... What powers do we want to see? Alright, so this here is the main European front. Yeah, we can see Milan doing so well, yet falling to the French. And now Poland starting to fall as well. Uh, what other front do we want to see? We want to see Antioch and the Timurids. Yeah, they just collapsed as soon as the Timurids, you know, started making progress. Yeah, Antioch collapsed. They just could not hold on. And it was very quick as well. Let's get Egypt in here. Yeah, same story. Alright, take out the Timurids, add the Turks, and Jerusalem. Where are they? Here we are. Ah, they did terrible. And now looking at the British Isles, it seems Norway is the main power. Scotland in second. But Norway has lands elsewhere, so I don't know if it really counts. Ooh, Novgorod. Uh, they took Riga. What is the top five settlements? Uh, sorry, factions. Here we are. So in first place, it puts the Timurids. France in second. In third, we have, is that the Pope? No, the, 
Third is Poland. Yeah, they are the f third most powerful faction. Why did they become a vassal? I've got no idea. Uh, we got the Pope, and then the Hungarians. Let's take a look at military. That's a big military. It's like Poland, they're not really that far behind the French. Uh, production. Territory. Uh, financial, can't get anything there. And population. France has the largest population. So yeah, well done France for getting the win. But I'm going to go one more episode. Hope to see you there for it. Please do subscribe if you are enjoying and want to get notified of future episodes. And please do share or like and stuff like that as that does really help me grow, helps me out, and makes these much more worthwhile. Tempts me to go further and deeper into the campaigns. Uh, but for now, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in tomorrow's video. Goodbye.